Today, let's take a look at the HPC TurboDrive Quad Pro card. One of our friends gave it to me and asked me to figure out how it works. So here we go. First thing I have to say is this thing is huge. For comparison, this is an AMD Radeon Pro V7350 by 2 card, which is a dual GPU card that AMD never released. We'll have a video on that soon, so stay tuned. This is exactly how I got a card. It came in a plastic bag, um, there's the card itself, and there's a couple bags of thermal pads. Before talking to the details, let's first take the card apart and see what's inside. So the middle part is a plastic cover, and you can unlock it by holding the switch on the right hand side. And then um, it's a huge heatsink, and underneath the heatsink, there's four M.2 slots. Um, it looks like they're M.2 22110 compatible. Um, let me put a drive there. Yeah, it is. Um, actually supports a longer 22110 M.2 cards. Now let's take out the screws on the back. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws that's holding the back plate. Um, these screws are really tight and they're pretty hard to take apart. Um, it looks like there's some more screws that's holding the back plate. So uh, let's flip it to the front and see. Okay, so um, okay, so the whole face plate came off. Wow, there's a huge number of huge capacitors. Um, they will protect the data in the event of power loss. So the capacitors will provide the remaining power to the SSD to let it finish writing data from its cache to the actual NAND chip. Although most server-grade SSDs actually have that feature built in, but most consumer or prosumer products just don't have that feature, as it will add more cost to the SSD itself. Next, let's talk about the capability of this card. As we can see here, basically this card is just a PCIe to M.2 adapter with uh, active cooling and a bunch of capacitors, of course. Unlike the board here, which has an onboard PLX switching chip that will divide the lanes without the help of the motherboard, this card does not have any PCIe switching logic. So um, what this means is that it relies on the motherboard to divide a whole PCIe X16 slot into four PCIe X4 slots. This feature is called PCIe bifurcation. So uh, this is a feature provided by CPU and chipset to divide a X16 slot into 2x8 slots or 4x4 slots, sometimes even 8x2 slots. And that's why you need special motherboard support for drives like um, Optane H10, because those drives require dividing an X4 slot into 2x2 connections. But that's a topic for another day. Uh, with that being said, Currently, this card would only work on Intel Server and HEDT platforms, um, which is X99 and X299. No, it would not work on a Z490, not on a Z370. On the AMD side, however, it will work with the third generation Ryzen or Threadripper, so you got more options on the AMD side. The original HPC Turbo card ships with three different options. You got either two of the 256 gigs, 2 of the 512 gigs or 2 of the 1 terabyte SSDs. Those are Samsung PM861 SSDs. But since this card has 4 M.2 slots, so today we're using not 1, not 2, but 4 of the Samsung PM981A 256 gig SSDs to see how fast this card performs. Um, quick specs on the SSD. The Samsung PM981A is pretty much the OEM equivalent of a 970 EVO Plus. According to Samsung, it has a sequential read speed of 3500 megabytes per second and a sequential write speed of 3000 megabytes per second. It is rated at 580k IOPS random read and 500k random writes. This looks pretty good on paper. Now let's plug it in and see how it works.
So here we are in the BIOS. Um, let's hit F7 and go to advanced settings. And then we're looking for CPU storage. Here, um, this setting is unique to uh, ASUS motherboards, but you'll find something similar on your motherboard. So here we need to change the setting to a Hyper M.2 X16 VROCK. So the difference between VROCK and data is um, if you choose data, it's going to appear in the system as four separate drives. But if you choose VROCK, uh, you have red options. So let's restart. And now we're back into BIOS. So after we change the setting to VROCK and then we go back to CPU storage, we're going to have a new option called Intel Virtual RAID on CPU. Um, so let's hit the menu and then uh, you may realize something. Although it's listing all the drives that's connected to it, but uh, it's not giving us any kind of uh, RAID options. That is because we also need to change the setting under PCH storage. We need to change the mode from uh, AHCI to uh, RSTE. So now we're booting into Windows. Um, actually, we can use the Intel VROCK software to create a software RAID in Windows. Here we're doing RAID 0 since we're testing for extreme speed. Um, let's check all four drives and then let's name it uh, HPZ Card Quad. And then hit next. So uh, here we're going to check the box that we understand all existing data on the drives will be lost after we uh, create a RAID volume. So here we are. Um, you can see on the pop-up window that the RAID volume is already attached to the system. Okay, next, let's run some benchmarks, starting with the Crystal Disk Mark. Wow, can you believe it? We're getting over 10 gigs per second. That's gigabytes per second in sequential read, and about 9 gigs in sequential write. These are absolutely insane numbers. I mean, I get it, it's four fast NVMe drives, but still, I've never seen anything like this, at least not on a system I own. And just look at these crazy IOPS numbers. I mean, those are about what I get on an Optane. The rest of all the benchmarks are pretty similar. It just gives ridiculous numbers, like at least over 6,000 megabytes per second. And in ATTO benchmark here, it would do it over eight gigabytes per second on any file size that's over one megabyte. However, um, not all benchmark softwares would favor RAID. HD Tune here, for example. Um, it's only getting about a thousand megabytes per second in retest, but it's still relatively impressive. And another thing I noticed here is, although we're running software RAID, but the CPU usage is around 2.6% during the whole test which really reminds me of how much CPU have developed over the years. In fairness, this HPC Turbo card is just a PCIe to M.2 adapter. It is really up to the drives to determine what kind of speed you'll be getting. But the bottom line is, at least it's not bottlenecking these SSDs. However, um, the Z card is not your only choice on the market. Actually, most major OEMs has their own version of the uh, a similar PCIe to M.2 adapter. Um, this SROC card, for example, uh, it looks very similar to the ASUS M.2 Hyper card, but uh, with a different shroud and a different fan location. The ASUS M.2 card here, which you will see in my future videos, it's actually a huge card. It's about as long as my 1080 Ti. And uh, here's a gigabyte version. It's basically the same as the ASUS version, but with a uh, bigger fan. Lastly is the MSI version. I mean, MSI actually makes a dual socket version of this. I mean, it looks more like a video card to me. Um, you know, I would believe you if you say it's like a mini GTX 1050 or something. So last question, how much does it cost? HP is actually selling the Z Turbo drives as a complete assembly with the SSDs loaded in it. So I think you already have an idea. So here we can find one two terabyte model on sale at CDW.com. You can get it for 1582.99 plus tax. And if you decide you don't need two terabyte of storage, you can get a 512 gig version on server for less for just over $200. I mean, in fairness, I think it is a good deal if you need that peace of mind. And as always, you can probably find one for cheap on eBay. 
but your mileage may vary. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. You can also support us by hitting the links in the video description. We'll get a small commission from Amazon. Thanks for watching.